a sprinkling of crunchy ikan bilis and slices of cucumber, layered with a juicy fried chicken thigh. A dollop of sambal, topped with flavorful rendang sauce and a sunny side up egg. This nasi lemak ayam burger was launched on Twitter with this spicy message. Why so salty? Well, you see, in 2017, McDonald's Singapore launched a nasi lemak burger. The Nasi Lemak Burger was created in 2017 for the Singapore Food Festival. And also to celebrate Singapore's National Day on August 9th. And McDonald's made it clear that it was... Just for you, Singapore. Uh-oh. But that didn't sit well with some people, namely Malaysians. One commenter even said that Nasi Lemak is from Malaysia, not Singapore. Others chimed in that nasi lemak is Malaysia's traditional food. The media picked up on the fight. So, did Singapore really commandeer Malaysia's national food? I'm Ming. Food lover, chef, and culinary consultant. The nasi lemak burger battle happened a few years ago. But it sort of just fizzled out without any definitive conclusion. So, it's time to find out where nasi lemak really comes from. My journey to find out more about nasi lemak begins at this burger joint in Kuala Lumpur, where one of the biggest showdowns in modern nasi lemak history started. You tweeted, you know we mean business when we bring out the flag. And then you put nasi lemak burger in front of a Malaysian flag. Dear Singapore, nice try, but, but. why this emotion? The Malaysian netizens weren't too happy that, uh, to some extent, you know, there was an unofficial claim that nasi lemak is a very Singaporean thing. As a Malaysian, it is generally known that nasi lemak is a key representative when it comes to food. I believe the reason is because you can buy nasi lemak at any given time of day in Malaysia. And by that default, it is our national dish. Once someone questioned our identity and nasi lemak, we want to come out in full force and say, hey, look, this is us, don't mess with us. Did you feel like you righted or wrong here? Absolutely. We want the world to say, hey, when you think nasi lemak, you think Malaysia. Do you accept that nasi lemak could be Singaporean? The version with sausage, yes, it's all yours. You can take that and own it. As a peace offering, I would love to offer this burger to you and we'll have a bit of a burger bro moment and try this nasi lemak burger together. Yeah, I don't trust you with a knife. I'll, I'll cut it out. Cut it. I know the origins of a dish can be complicated. The ingredients could have been imported or the dish could have variations elsewhere. But when a country calls a dish its national dish, it's most likely because they invented it. So, the question is, did nasi lemak originate from Malaysia? I thought I should start my investigation here. At one of the oldest nasi lemak stalls in Malaysia's oldest city, Malacca. Hello, Cik Saleha. Hi. Hi. I've heard so much about your nasi lemak. Uh. Can I try your nasi lemak? Uh, can. Can, uh? Uh, can? Okay, okay. Okay. Nasi lemak means fatty or rich rice in Malay. The richness comes from the creamy taste of the coconut milk that the rice is cooked in. 
This is the nasi lemak that Madame Saleha sold when she first started out in 1970. Nasi lemak ni kita genam beras, kukus, turun balik, kukus lagi sekali sampai dia lembut, baru kacau santan. Dah kacau dah serap, dah cantik, nanti kalau teruk dah kering, tambah sikit. Kalau tak pandai kacau, dia hancur. Memang asal orang Melaka yang buat si lemak kukus ini. When did the other side dishes come into play? Dulu bawa bawa miaga nasi lauk lima macam je, tak banyak-banyak. Saya dulu pakai sotong, pakai siham, pakai daging, pakai ayam goreng, pakai ayam rendang. Tahun 80, macam-macam lauk saya masak. Sebab customer pun dah ada. Customer nak suka makan, kita masak lauk macam-macam. Uh, sambal, uh. it's quite sweet, very fragrant. But the one that's interesting to me is the kangkung. Kangkung. So I've never had nasi lemak with kangkung before. It's not a typical vegetable I find in nasi lemak. Arwah mak mentua saya ajau. Kalau miaga nasi lemak, goreng kangkung. Mak mentua saya orang boyan. Ada gajin masak buat nasi lemak. Madam Saleha's inclusion of kangkung was influenced by her mother-in-law's Boyanese roots. The Boyanese came from the Bawian Islands of East Java, Indonesia. Madam Saleha's mother-in-law's Boyanese family migrated to Malacca generations ago. So your Boyanese mother-in-law also knew how to make nasi lemak. Mak mentu aku dulu, mak dia dulu aja buat nasi lemak. Wait, so nasi lemak could have come from Indonesia? Dah tak pergi tak tahu. It piqued my interest that Madame Saleha's Boyanese mother-in-law knew how to cook nasi lemak. Could nasi lemak have an Indonesian connection? In my search, I came across a dish that may provide a lead. Nasi uduk. Nasi lemak and nasi uduk are two popular dishes that have coconut milk in their rice. One article called Indonesia's Nasi Uduk, a close cousin of Nasi Lemak. Another said that Nasi Lemak and Nasi Uduk shared the same soul and same popularity. A food blogger found that the two dishes are often considered the same dish. But that Sultan Agung of Mataram, which is in central Java, created Nasi Uduk in the 17th century. So when was Nasi Lemak created? Could nasi lemak have been inspired by nasi uduk? In my journey to uncover the roots of nasi lemak, I've landed on another dish. Nasi uduk from Indonesia. It also features rice cooked in coconut milk, paired with side dishes like egg and sambal. According to historical records, nasi uduk has been around since the 17th century. Could nasi lemak have been inspired by nasi uduk? I'm here in Kuala Lumpur to speak to food historian Ahmad Najib Arifin, or Naj. He's known in Malaysia as the expert on the origins of food. Hi, Naj. Hi, Ming. Okay. Good to meet you. I see you've got a plate of food there. Yes, I've ordered myself a plate of nasi uduk. Nasi uduk, okay. Yes. I have a packet of nasi lemak that there I purchased from a store nearby. Could nasi lemak have been inspired by other Indonesian dishes like nasi uduk? Because they're quite similar. There is a difference between the two kinds of dishes. And maybe the best way is for you to try it out and taste that difference. The nasi uduk is sort of lighter, not so heavily mm -hmm. lemak. Whereas the nasi lemak rice mm -hmm. is, is heavier, it's this okay. strong coconut flavour, and it's quite a lot more yes. savoury. The surrounding dishes are also quite different. Nasi lemak is more basic. You know, even just half an egg and the fried peanuts, fried anchovies, the sambal, this is a complete 
nasi lemak. Anything else is just embellishment. But nasi uduk, you must have tempe, which is uh, fermented soybean cake, and then shredded omelettes. And also you have the crackers here, which are considered a part of that uh, nasi uduk. Look at the sambal. It's very, very different from the nasi lemak sambal. It uses green chilies. So in summary, you're saying that it's unlikely these two were linked mm -hmm. and that nasi lemak came from nasi uduk. Neither came from the other. They were separately created dishes which grew over time. Coconut trees are ubiquitous. So at some point or other in history, people would have already experimented with cooking rice or maybe other kinds of grains with coconut milk. Naj has done extensive research on how nasi lemak might have come about. There is a folklore which uh, originates apparently from Malacca as well as Mua, which is nearby to Malacca, about the story of a widow by the name of uh, Mak Kuntum and her daughter Sri. So one day, while cooking a pot of rice, Sri accidentally spilled coconut milk into it. So when Mak Kuntum returned home, she smelled the fragrant rice and asked her daughter, what it was. Sri, being a little bit hesitant and afraid of being scolded, she replied, nasi lemak, nasi lemak, which in colloquial Malay means, it's just rice, mom, it's just rice, mom. And that's how the dish was invented. Assuming this story is true, Natch, mm -hmm. help us place when this would have occurred. Considering that Malacca was the seat of the uh, Malay Malacca Sultanate Empire, and that goes back uh, all the way to the 14th century, mm. it could have been anywhere from there. If this myth perhaps didn't even actually happen, where do you think the origins of Nasi Lama come from based on your research? To illustrate that, it's best that we go and look at a map. Okay my research, it's very predominant in the whole west coast of the Malay Peninsula. It's less on the east coast, so that's a first indicator. The other indicator is the actual ingredients that go into the whole basic dish. You have the rice, you have the anchovies, you have peanuts, and very critically, you have the sambal. There are literally hundreds of kinds of sambal all around the Malay archipelago. And uh, the one that is used in nasi lemak is the type that is very common on the west coast. Mm. So there, you begin to get the sense that nasi lemak did originate from somewhere along the west coast of the Malay Peninsula. The west coast of the Malay Peninsula is long. Can you name a specific spot? That's so, is Malacca is on that there west. There you are. So yeah. Malacca is right there, almost in the middle of the Malay Peninsula. And uh, because we have that folklore, which is very common there and very popular there, it's a possible indicator that uh, Malacca was at least the place where nasi lemak became famous. Whilst we can't pinpoint the exact person or village where nasi lemak was invented, Naj is very sure that it originated from the various cities along the west coast of the Malay Peninsula, which doesn't include Singapore. I wonder how people in Singapore would feel about that. Enjoy nasi lemak, you know? For us to, to hear as a Malay Singaporean, you cannot claim nasi lemak. The Malay in me just go, eh? me how? Am I not part of this identity? Singapore nasi lemak is way better than the Malaysia. Why? Because of its simplicity. Do remember, it's nasi lemak, not nasi padang. There's a Malay version, there's a Chinese version, and there are Lux versions as well. And there's the $1.50 version, which is a small packet of rice in banana leaf. To me, that's a quintessential Singaporean dish. We have it for breakfast, we have it lunch, we have it for supper. I think there's nothing wrong for us if we want to claim it as our national dish as well, because we just simply love it. I wonder what Sarafian Saleh thinks of this. He is a heritage researcher with a knack for finding lost places. Hello, sir. It was Mr. Ming. Like torn down palaces used by Malay royals or forgotten mosques in Singapore. 
So who can we attribute nasi lemak to? Simply put, it's from it's a Malay dish from the Malay archipelago. Ah, so there is a possibility that Malays in Singapore created nasi lemak. Okay, speaking of Malays in Singapore, we are all migrant society. So when these Malay migrants from Java, from Sulawesi, mm. from Sumatra, they come to Singapore, they brought with them a cultural baggage. When Malay migrants start to settle in Singapore and call this place home, they start to cook. And so nasi lemak was one of those dishes that's very popular in Singapore. So I wouldn't say that nasi lemak came from Singapore, but I would just say that nasi lemak actually exists in Singapore among, from the Malays. From what I've gathered so far, this is the most definitive statement I can make about nasi lemak. It is a Malay dish from the Malay archipelago, created way before Malaysia and Singapore existed as independent countries. Now, the other question to tackle, the trickier one is this. Who has better nasi lemak, Singapore or Malaysia? Processed food, hard work. What would you prefer? Now, nasi lemak used to be a humble Malay dish, and back in the day, it could have cost less than a dollar, and generally came with rice, ikan bilis, peanuts, maybe sambal. But today, there's so many options, as you can see. To help me understand why our side dishes are so different, I enlisted the help of an advocate of Singapore heritage cuisine, Chef Damien. So I prepared side dishes for the nasi lemak. Can you tell which is across the causeway and which is Singapore? I would say this stuff from the ikan bilis side onwards hmm. is more Singaporean maybe. And on this side, less familiar to me. These look like more complex items. You're right, this is Singapore. Mm. And here, you have the Malaysian variety that you can find in the nasi lemak store. You have sambal sotong, where they use actually fresh squid. You have sambal paru. You get paru in Singapore, but not in nasi lemak stores. Karam, your cockle sambal. So why are the side dishes different? In the beginning, you know, Singapore and Malaysia, same, same. But in the 70s and the 80s, you know, we got a lot more busier. We could not spend more than 10-15 minutes to have our nasi lemak before heading off to work, right? We just didn't have that luxury of sitting down, having four or five dishes. If there was a stall selling nasi lemak, of course there was fish, but nobody wanted to have the fish. Because bones, bones yeah, scales, exactly. Yeah. You know, I want fish cake because there's no bones. In Singapore, in the 80s, you find a lot more processed foods coming in. And it wasn't the Malay stalls that sold nasi lemak with, with, with processed food. It was mainly the Chinese stalls. As compared to this side of the table, yeah. tell me what goes into these dishes here. A lot. A lot of hard <laughs> work, really. There are two different types of sambals, right? Even the rempa to cook the cockles, the beef lung, the paru, the sotong, it's all different. And you want that, because otherwise you get the same flavour profile throughout, and it's flat. Who has better nasi lemak, Singapore or Malaysia? What do you think? Malaysian nasi lemak is better, because processed food, hard work. Nothing is processed. Everything is cooked from scratch. Different sambals. What would you prefer? <laughs> well, to be fair, not every nasi lemak sold in Singapore comes with processed food. We cannot claim to be the birthplace of nasi lemak for sure, but this we can claim. Home to a Michelin Bib Gourmand eatery that has taken nasi lemak to the next level. And you certainly won't find sausages or fish cakes here. I've prepared three different types of nasi lemak with three different types of coconut milk. One is with the packet ones, 
One is with uh, coconut milk from the local market and one is uh, the Coconut Club special blend of coconut milk. Would you be able to tell the difference? Let's go with this one first. Coconut is there, rice is there, but it's a bit one note. Next one. It's a bit oilier. Right, the last one. It's not oily and cloying and greasy. There are levels to the flavour profile, almost floral in nature. This is obviously yours. And I would say that the second one would be local supplier. And the first one is the very pedestrian, packet form of coconut milk. Correct? Correct. Okay, sweet. You got it right. There's many different types of coconuts. For us, we only get the coconuts and they are, they are de-husked and cracked open only on the day itself that they deliver to us. So it keeps it very fresh. I need to show you in the kitchen. All right, let's go. What we have here is our coconuts, imported fresh daily from JB, the shortest uh, route to Singapore, so that we ensure freshness. Besides fresh coconuts, this is what makes their coconut milk different. This pneumatic press is made specifically for the Coconut Club to extract coconut milk. Its proprietary technology is designed by a former F1 engineer. The boiling of the rice will overcook the rice and the rice grains will actually break. So what we do is to steam it overnight with some of the aromatics, let it rest overnight, and then the next day we'll add the coconut milk. Why put in so much effort for a dish that many say doesn't originate from Singapore? We can show that when we're doing it in Singapore, we can make it better. You guys heard that, right? It's better here in Singapore. Not from me, uh, from Chef Daniel. Okay. Nasi lemak could have been created by accident, or more likely as a simple way to fill people up before a hard day of work. This Malay dish might have originated from the west coast of the Malay Peninsula, but it didn't remain there. Over hundreds of years, the dish has been adopted and adapted by various communities. Today, nasi lemak has been enhanced, elevated and refined. But it remains a dish accessible to everyone, savoured however they like it.